love Ohio. Kind of different for me to see all this greenery since you know we don't have that in the desert. We're in Guernsey County. Our victim was 17-year-old Robin Stone and her unborn baby. Yes. Robin Stone was seven months pregnant when she went missing on August the 27th, 1991. It was her first day of senior year of high school. She came home from school, got an urgent call, walked out of her house for the last time, and she was never heard from again. And think about it, this was a little bitty school where they all knew each other, and Robin didn't show up for school on the second day. Four months later, on December the 28th of 91, right after Christmas, three men were hunting out by Lewberg Lake, and they happened upon some skeletal remains and called the sheriff's department. A female body has been discovered. That body who believed to be the Robin Stone was missing several months ago. The deputy who responded knew about Robin's missing person case, so he was actively looking for little baby bones, and he found those right there. It never really has been established who the father of the baby was. Yeah. The police thought that determining the father of Robin's child was key to the case, but Robin Stone was pretty honest about the fact that she had lots of boyfriends. She kept a journal documenting uh, what she did with those boys. Without proof of who the father was, the DA felt that they did not have enough to prove this case. So the case just rocked along for 23 years with nothing happening. Well, I think we got our work cut out for us on this one. A lot of people to talk to. So this week we are going to try and determine with DNA evidence who the father of Robin's baby really was. And hopefully finally find out after 23 years who killed Robin Stone and her unborn baby. It has been 16 years and still no answer. The police consider her killing a cold case. Years later, the case is still unsolved. There are so many cold cases out there just waiting to be solved. The crime scene ultimately tells the story of the murder. We want to bring justice to these victims. Hi there. How Hi. are you? Sam Williams. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Jason Mackey. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Are you from here? Yes. Born and raised here. How about you? I spent 15 years working in Next County South of here. He drafted you to help out with everything? He's the little worker bee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that mean he gets to push you around all week? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> As a father, I can't imagine one of my children disappearing and, and, and later finding out that something horrific happened. But in addition to that, my grandchild was never able to be brought into this world that I would never get to meet because of these events. Very tragic. First and foremost, we always want to give answers to the family. One of the goals of this case, not only to eventually be able to make an arrest and have someone convicted, but to give closure to the family and answers to them, answers that they've been waiting 23 years for. Hey, good morning, boys. Hey. Good morning. Look who we brought. Jason Mackey. Steve, Steve Spingola. Mackey. Nice to meet you, Jason. Sam? Yes. Johnny Bonds. Nice to meet you. We brought uh, Steve Spingola and Johnny Bonds, the North and the South, because there are a couple of witnesses in this case that are going to be a little difficult to deal with, and they had that experience. So this is her. Yes. You want to start with telling us about the case? Robin Stone, she was uh, 17 years old at the time. She was seven months pregnant. Uh, she was going into her senior year of high school. She'd actually went to school the first day. Second day, she didn't show up. Robin had received a phone call, left the house in a hurry in her car to go meet somebody. Robin had told her mother that she was going to do math homework with a friend. She told her mom she'd be back in about an hour for dinner. She never showed up. Robin's mother then called in the next morning and made an official report that her daughter hadn't returned home. For the next several days, uh, deputies had kind of scoured the area to see if they could locate her. This went on for several weeks. Then on December 28th of 91, there were three hunters in the area and came across what they believed to be human skeletal remains. Lewberg's Lake off of County Road 15, where a female body has been discovered. That body at this point we believe to be the body of Robin Stone. There were some identifying features, jewelry and things like that, that caused the deputies to believe that that was Robin. How was she identified? She was identified through dental records. The first suspect that really came to light was Lee Savage. Lee had been the longest relationship that she had had. 
She really cared for Lee, and she wanted him to be a part of this baby's life. Police initially suspected Lee Savage because Robin claimed that he was the father of her unborn child. That was a claim that Lee Savage always denied. And then the case kind of got more complicated when that diary was found. Yes, the diary led to uh, several different uh, relationships that she had had. Robin was very good at writing almost a daily journal on her activities. A very honest daily journal. A very honest daily journal, yes. I think that diary paints the whole picture of Robin's life at that time. It's like a freeze frame snapshot of her mind and her heart. It shows how she first met Lee Savage in January, the first time they had sex, and every time he broke up with her, and how she begged him to take her back. It listed all the other boys she was involved with, but the only one she wanted was Lee. Comfort zone where the victim is found. He's been there before. They've had sex. Lou Berg, Lake is comfort zone. Robin's body was found in an area known as Lewberg Lake. That's a property that's right up next to the Savage property. Lee Savage used to hang out there. We know that he took Robin there at least one time that we know of. It's also an area that we know that the Savage family frequented. The family is very tight-knit. If there was a battle with one, then you battled them all. The Savage family is very much in the middle of where Robin's car was found, where Robin's remains were found, where the baby was found. All those places are very directly connected and close to the Savage family. There's a Savage road, for God's sake. Okay, so next up there. There were a lot of threats that came from Lee's father, Jack. So this is his daddy, yes. Jack Savage. Okay, what do we want to put first under Jack Savage? Did not want the baby? Yep. Absolutely. Jack didn't like Robin. Jack felt that they were a little more middle to upper class, and Robin came from a lower income family. He was not happy that Robin might be calling his son, Lee, that baby's daddy, because he did not approve of their relationship or of her. Does dad have a short fuse? When Lee would lose a fight at school and he'd get beat up, he would come home and Jack would beat on Lee for losing the fight. Kicked his ass. Yeah, this is a very uh, loving family. Very violent, irritable man. When you read this case, Lee Savage is all over it as the person with the most motive who's having issues with Robin and their relationship. But you can't disregard Jack Savage, who was so angry about Lee and Robin's relationship. You have to figure out, was Jack Savage so angry he would help his son commit murder or he would do the murder himself to take care of the situation? So in addition to getting DNA evidence, this week is all about getting inside the world of the Savage family to try and find out what really happened to Robin Stone and her baby. If it's this family involved, A, to take a 17-year-old girl's life, but then to literally just put her body where you're driving by for four months every day knowing she's right there, that's sick. We're going to meet Robin's family, her mom, her younger sister, and her stepfather. Thank y'all for coming out here and meeting with us. We've asked Kelly and Yolanda to come in and help us on this case. It's something that we've never forgot about, and hopefully we can get somewhere a lot further than uh, we are right now. Jamie is an adult now. At the time Robin disappeared, she was only 10 years old. So obviously Jamie's had a lot of questions throughout the years and missed a lot of the sisterhood, I guess, if you will. Judy never got to see a grandchild grow up. Tell us some stories about Robin. <laughs> Robbie was a good kid. She loved going to school. Yeah. Yeah, she worked. She's real smart, real smart. Yes. Did she have any plans for what she wanted to do with her life after high school? Yes, she wanted to be a veterinarian. She loved all kinds of animals. What do you remember of your sister? Um, she would take me to the swimming pool. Um, okay. Okay, Jamie. You know, if you didn't cry, it wouldn't be normal. It's okay. On the night that Robin went missing, she got a phone call that sounded urgent, said goodbye to her mom, and walked out. I don't know who it was. She, all she said was, I'll be there, I'll be there. I still kick myself as to ask them who it was on the phone that night. What was going on in her life that she didn't want you to know about? Probably Lee. Did Lee Savage ever call your house or come by to see if you knew anything about Robin? Never, not one time. He didn't even go to the funeral. And it's just, 
a nightmare for a mother to go through this. Yolanda and I are both moms, and I think that as hard as it is, you can bury your spouse, you can bury your parents, but I don't know how you bury your baby. And you buried your baby and your grandbaby. Never did get to meet my grandbaby if it was a boy or a girl. I mean, they had ultrasounds, but the doctor couldn't make out of it. You don't know? No. Maybe we can find that out for you, too. Oh, OK, that would be great if it was a boy or a girl. I remember one of the fond memories I have is everybody wants to know what the sex of that child's going to be. Um, and they were not able to have that. Thank you very much. OK, okay. Thank all right. Thanks for, for coming. <laughs> So we're hoping that that is one of the things that we're going to be able to do uh, at the end of the week is we're going to be able to give those answers to the Stone family. In 1991, Robin Stone was seven months pregnant when she was killed along with her unborn child. Her killer was never found. Our main suspects, Lee Savage and his father, Jack, both live less than a mile from the area where Robin's body was found. It's also an area the Savage family was known to frequent. And now it's time for us to head out there ourselves to see the place where Robin's body was found. Absolutely no fishing. Morning. Morning. How are Morning. you doing, sir? Doing fine. Hello. Morning. Thank you all very much for coming. Charles Pickenpaw and his son, Charles Jr., originally discovered Robin's body back in 1991. December 28, 1991. So tell us about that day. We've been rabbit hunting, and the boy, he thought he'd seen remains of a deer up there, and he went up to look, and he hollered out to come over, and he said, I don't think it's a deer. He said, there's a shirt and clothes laying here. You mind walking down there and showing us? No, no problem. Sir, you're not dressed for this. I think you probably all stay at the car. <laughs> Did y'all smell anything? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was right in this general facility on this flat area here. And the first body part we come upon is a bone. What a great place to hide a body. No one walks that property. No one's going to see her. You can't even see her through the branches. You had to crawl in there. The animals had kind of scattered it out over a pretty big area through here. Brother-in-law seen the skeleton backbone. He said, well, that's not a deer. I seen the hair of her head laying right there. Once I found the jawbone, like right beside my foot, I yes. was like, I, I, I'm done. And I went that way. We walk further down into the pines, we find a skull. There was no distinct damage to the skull, nor any damage that they could find from either a knife or a bullet on any other bones. So unfortunately, the manner in which she was killed is unknown. Sheriff McCauley was actually one of the deputies on the scene there that day, and he's the one that discovered the little baby bones of Robin's unborn child. As we were processing the area, I had ascertained the information that she was pregnant at the time, so I looked for very, very small bone. Good thing you looked, because if you wouldn't have been looking, you wouldn't have noticed. If I hadn't had knowledge that she was pregnant at the time, I may not have. If it was Jack who killed Robin, he could have easily driven back here and dumped her body in this group of trees. But if it was Lee, since he and Robin have been out here before, he could have just met her here, killed her, and left her body. So we're standing right here. Sheriff, point to the direction of the Savage's house. It'd be about that way, about a half a mile. It's crazy to see just how close the Savages lived to where Robin was found. Either one of them could have killed her and gotten back home completely unnoticed. The only issue would have been dealing with Robin's car, which she drove away from her home the night she went missing. And it was found just hours later on a property not far from Lubert Lake. How's it going, Jamie? We just kind of wanted to see the layout of how you found the car. Jamie Hayhurst found Robin's car within probably an hour to an hour and a half after she had gone missing. That car was far enough past that I could see the back of it. Just the hood was past the end of the trailer. Okay. At that time, he had an abandoned trailer, and he would drive by and check on it because people had been burglarizing and stealing some of the plumbing and other parts. I pulled off the top of the hill and came running down, thinking I'm going to catch somebody. <laughs> the motor was still warm. I don't think he'd been there now. 
on August 27th of 1991, he drove by, saw a suspicious car there, was going to disable it and call the sheriff's department because he felt there were prowlers on his property. There was somebody that was familiar enough to know they could hide it here. He notified the sheriff's department about the car, which ultimately turned out to be Robin Stone's car. Is there anybody that you can think of that would have known that, hey, there's not much activity around there? Yeah. <laughs> Savage is all I've ever heard. Okay. He knows the area. He can get to his house and never touch a road. Nobody even see you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Definitely puts a new spin on it. Yeah. It's clearly somebody who knows the area. They wanted to separate it from the Savage Road and, and her body. That's the key right there. Yep. Come on in and have a seat. Marigold Marsh is the mother of one of Robin's friends. She spoke to Jack Savage the night that Robin went missing. That night, when the mom called me at 8.30, she said, is Robin there? Robin's supposed to have come to your house. Madam was doing her homework, and they uh -huh. got upstairs, and they said, have you seen Robin? And she said, no. And so Robin wasn't at my house. This is on the same day she disappeared? Yeah, okay. and it was like 8.30 or 8.35 at night when her mom called, when Judy called. And I believe that around 9 o'clock, because I didn't wait long, I called Jack Savage, and he answered the phone, and I said, Robin has disappeared. And her mom called here and wanted to know if she was here. She's not here he didn't even finish what i had to say he said well i hope the bitch is dead that night yes and and i said she's just disappeared i didn't know anything and he said she's blaming my son for the baby and she's welfare trash and he was just screaming and as nearly as i recall i hung up the phone on him he was angry i mean he was it was rad Jack's response to the news that a teenager went missing speaks volumes about his character, but we still need to get closer to understanding what his involvement could have been in Robin's death. Hello, Elsie. Yes. So the next person we're interviewing is a former mother-in-law of Jack's son, Lee, who can talk about the family from an insider's perspective. Did Lee ever talk to you about his relationship well, with Robin? Lee told me that he could be the father of the baby. So he kind of felt that he may be the baby's father? Well, the way he talked, it was either him or his dad. Lee's dad was having sex with Robin as well? Well, Lee talked. How'd Lee feel about that? He wasn't too happy about it. Hey, thanks for taking the time and speaking with me. So maybe Jack has issues on wanting to date very young girls, or not date them, have sex with them. Yeah. Twenty-three years ago, Robin Stone and her unborn child were found dead, and nobody has ever been held responsible. We have recently learned that one of our suspects, Jack Savage, who was known to have hated Robin, may actually have been the father of her child. Since we feel that paternity could be a very strong motive, it's now essential that we get DNA evidence from Jack and Lee Savage as quickly as possible. We'll need a search warrant to get those DNA samples because in the state of Ohio, a court order to get DNA from a suspect is actually harder than in other states. So in this particular case, we wanted to get additional evidence to support our probable cause for the search warrant. But our investigators have come up with an outside the box idea that I think is a great option. My understanding is that your DA is ready to draft a search warrant if y'all can figure out a way to get a buckle swab, a DNA sample from another of Lee's children. If someone else inside the Savage family is agreeable to volunteer DNA evidence, we can compare that to the remains of Robin's baby. If we get a match, there's a high probability then that the baby was fathered by one of the savages. And then we can get a warrant for Jack and Lee's DNA and find out for sure who the actual father is. Well, I'm Sergeant Williams with the Sheriff's Office, Guernsey County. Sergeants Mackey and Williams have been in touch with Lee's daughter, Valerie Wheeler. What this is about, we were never able to determine the paternity of who Robin's baby was. If your father was the, the baby's father, that'd be a, a brother or sister that you had. So you'd want to know that too, I'm sure. I mean, the quickest way, if it's okay with you, is just do a consensual swab of your mouth. You okay with that, Valerie? Yes. Yeah, okay. So I'll do one side, then I'll do the other. Well, thank you. It was nice meeting you. 
While waiting for our DNA, we're going to gather as much information as possible, and we're going to start with oh. Lee's past wives and girlfriends. What we're working on here is a, a case involving a girl named Robin Stone. Have you heard of that? Well, my best friend. Is that right? We went to church camp together. Uh, I'm gonna get into some kind of personal information here, but things I need to know. Lee Savage, how many times do you think he became physically abusive with you? Oh, jeez. <laughs> a lot. Okay. He broke my tailbone once, pushed me out the back door of my mom's house. What would trigger him to get violent? It don't make much. He has a feud about this long. All about control. Yes. He has control of everything. How controlling was he during times you had uh, sex with him? This choked me and made me pass out during sex. Does he like that? I mean, is that a, he likes to choke people out during sex. Was that a normal thing with him? Uh, he's only done it a couple times, but that second time he knocks me out, that's when no more, because that's scary. Was he ever arrested for any of that stuff? Did you find any report? He, he wouldn't do me any good anyway. Anytime I ever went to the cops about me, he always got out of it, so I gave up. Lee's got a violent temper. What she remembers most is his proclivity to choke people out during sexual activity, and she's afraid of him. He did it, didn't he? What do you think? I think he did. I've always thought he did. Lee showed me where they found Robin, which is like maybe not even a mile from his mom and dad. And it was his face expression whenever he showed me where she was found. It was just blank. I'm just so glad she's going to lay her ass finally. We're sure hoping to get there. She'll be on the right side. These stories of abuse are horrible. Lee has been married several times, so we need to talk to his other wives and girlfriends to see if he treated any of them this way. Were you around Lee very much? <sighs> yes, we were dating a long time ago. This is back when me and Robin hung out. How was his temperament? Oh, his temper's always been bad. Did he ever get violent with you? A little rough. A little rough. But... Okay, it's like during sexual thing yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we we're supposed to have regular sex. The next thing I know, he's like grabbing me, you know, and wanting to do it the other way. Do you remember Lee uh, assaulting you? Okay. What did he do to you? Did you have to go to the hospital? No. Just no. smack across the face. You punched him on your arms, your legs, and your chest as well. Right. What we look for are patterns. People don't change their behavior. There's some type of trigger in Lee when he doesn't get what he wants, he's prone to use violence especially sexual activity. When these women tell him no, he right away engages in either forced sexual activity or choking them. I'm gonna ask you a question, I don't know how to ask you, but I'm just gonna ask you. Did he ever choke you during intercourse? Yes. Did, did you pass out? No. Lee's history of violence suggests that he could be capable of killing Robin Stone with his bare hands. Hello. Hi, this is uh, Captain Payton with the Greens County Sheriff's Office. How are you doing? According to past statements, Lee had threatened a former member of the Savage family with physical harm after she had gotten a divorce and was out of the family. Uh, we're actually looking into the Robin Stone case again. We may have a rough divorce. Um, now, his brother did make the comment to me after the divorce and everything with that. I was lucky that what had happened to me was all that happened because it could have been worse. Like, he goes, well, you're lucky I don't do to you what I've done to that other girl. Wait, that's real important what you just said. Lee Savage said to you that you're lucky that I don't do to you what I did to that other girl. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's the word that came out of his mouth. Okay, we'll get back with you. Thank you. One of the most common phrases that leads police to a killer is like the one Lee said to this woman, you're lucky I don't do to you what I did to that girl. That statement right there makes me think we're hot on the trail of our killer. That is yes. awesome. Windows cannot open this file. Would you like some help, Detective Williams? May need that in a minute. All right, here we go. I'm going to print it. We're investigating the mysterious death of Robin Stone, a pregnant teenager who was killed mysteriously in 1991. Our two suspects are her former boyfriend, Lee Savage, his father, Jack, both whom could possibly be the father of her child. And now we're getting results from DNA from Robin's unborn child and one of Lee's children that may show a close enough DNA match to allow police to legally compel Jack and Lee themselves to give a DNA sample. So we can find out for certain if either one of them is the father. Okay, probability of half siblingship, 99.84%, 618 to one. 
That's good news. It could go to either one. Oh, absolutely. Between the two, you've got definite motive here. That gives us probable cause for a search warrant, right? Let's go ahead and tell everybody. Well, you're going to like that you're barking up the right tree. This is fantastic. It's exactly what we need to justify a search warrant. So Sam and Jason are on their way. Good to go. All right. Now that we have a warrant in hand, we are on the way to Jack Savage's house to get his DNA swab and to ask him about the death of Robin Stone. Hello. What do you need? Are you Jack? Yeah. I just wonder if you had a minute I could talk to you. Sure. Nice to meet you. Well, working on this Robin Stone investigation, of course, that happened 23 years ago. Okay. What do you think happened, Mr. Savage? What? Oh, I don't know what happened. She, of course, she dated Lee at one point. Was she ever up here? Did you ever meet her or anything? I met her at the apartments that they lived where my daughter lived. Okay. And she talked my son into dating her when she was four months pregnant. Was there ever anything where she was trying to pin it on him that he was the... Well, she made all kind of telephone calls. Robin did? All the time. Accusing him of being the father, so to speak. And hell, he never met her until after she was four months pregnant. <laughs> This is a bizarre statement from Jack Savage because it's common knowledge that Lee and Robin were together long before she was four months pregnant, a fact confirmed by multiple witnesses. Did you ever know exactly where she was found? I had no interest. I didn't give a shit what happened to that girl. We've learned a few things recently. Some information we've learned is there's been a DNA test done with a 99.8% uh, probability is that it belongs to your son. Been. And that's why we're here. About like it. That's not a lie. Because it's, it couldn't have happened. She was four months pregnant when he was introduced. Okay. Now I know that for oh. a fact. Jack, I'm not lying to you. The lab said it could be a possibility. It was Lee, or it could be his father. I come here today to, to get a DNA sample from you. And all that is is a, a cotton swab of your mouth just to make a Q tip. Well, you can have that. Okay. Well, I got a, I got a warrant but for it. But don't come back and say that I'm part of that. Because, buddy, I'll blow your ass off. I'll blow your ass off? Yeah. I'll blow your ass off. That's what he said. Can we call you if they get the results and they say it's you? Come back out? Come on in person. Why? Tell me that. Why is that? Because you think we're lying? It says right out there, no trespassing. Yeah, but this... Oh, I'll man, I'm on that. I can't believe you want to shoot us if we come back. You don't want to threaten Mr. Savage. Come back and tell me I'm part of that. Yeah, I mean, we're not saying yeah. this way or the other. It's there just ain't no goddamn way I can be a part of this. When someone is as hostile and defensive as Jack Savage is being, it makes me wonder what the heck he's hiding. He's not very nice. Not nice at all. I didn't think he liked you. Must have been your sunglasses. No, I took them off. That's what the problem was, your beady eyes. Yeah. Now, finally, it's time to approach Lee himself. Up here on the left. Just pull in somewhere, Steve. Yeah, he can't see us here. Oh. Put it back. Hopefully, he'll be more cooperative than his dad, and we can ask him some questions before presenting him with a warrant. Uh, we'll switch places. You can sit up there. I'll sit back. Okay. You can get the air conditioning. How you doing? Jason Mackey. Jason? You. Sam Williams. You look familiar, Sam. You do, too. So what's going on? Well, of course, you know, uh, Robin Stone. Mm-hmm. Uh... And we've been taking a look at that file, trying to clear that case out. It's just all these years, you know. Not... There's so much there that we don't know. We just kind of like to see if you would shed some light. Geez, just thinking back. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, you guys want to do this now, then? It's nervous. Well, we had, we had the files back at the office. We were out just cruising around when I called you. Okay. It just happened to okay. work out good. That's fine. Lee is much more laid back than his father. Okay. All right. Thank All right, you, sir. Either he's done nothing wrong or he's just a better liar. We're about to find out. Okay. Okay. Our main suspect, Lee Savage, has always denied to friends and family that he was the father of Robin's unborn child, who was killed along with her back in 1991. Did Lee think he could be the father? He thought that it was one of the guys, this list of guys that she had. Lee just kept denying it was his baby. He never wanted nothing to do with kids. He told you that? Yes. He said he wasn't going to put up with that. But now we've acquired a warrant for Lee's DNA, so we're finally going to know if he's the child's father. 
Detectives Mackey and Williams have asked Lee to come down so we can get his DNA, but in addition to that, there are still a lot of questions that need to be answered. No, we had heard that you had dated her, that you were possibly the father of her child. I dated her. I was 14 when I met her. We dated for like three or four months. Three or four months. It was summer. It was literally through a summer. It became kind of bland. i tell you why, because I was dating everybody. <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. At some point, she comes here and she's pregnant. Do you remember when that would have been? I had been with her in nine months. She had come to me the following spring, and I'm wanting to say early summer, and said that she was pregnant. This is the exact opposite of the story that Jack Savage, Lee's father, gave us, that Robin was four months pregnant when she and Lee started dating. But it still doesn't match what multiple witnesses have said about the timeline of Lee and Robin's relationship. When you guys would have sex, did you use protection? No, actually, we didn't. We had anal sex. Okay. Always I was anal? a virgin. I was a virgin until I was 16 years old. Always had anal sex with her? Yeah. Never or head job. And that's why Robin never come to me to look at me and say, you're the father. And I know she didn't. I know she couldn't. She never accused she you couldn't. of being alone. No. Okay. When do you think was the last time you seen her before was, she came was up? Was just right at the beginning, end of spring, beginning of summer, and that's when I had seen her at my sister's house. That was the last time I ever seen so her. So we're talking, you're thinking three to four months before she came up missing is the last time you actually physically yeah. laid eyes on her. Yeah. Okay. After letting Lee tell his version of the story, Sam brings out the notes that Captain Van Horn took a long time ago in a long interview he did of Lee. I found uh, Van Horn's statement that we talked to you about where he made some some notes when you talked to him. And I don't want you to go into the panic mode because I know I'm that not going to go into 20, panic mode. I didn't years. see her. See what arms are crossing now? Oh, yeah, you're right. They haven't been crossed at all before now. You can see he's starting to close up. Yeah. Well, here's what Van Horn wrote that you had said. Uh, you told him that you uh, had dated Robin for about nine months. That sound right? Oh, shit. I didn't think I'd date her that long. And then you advised that Robin had wanted to put your name on the birth certificate. I never said that. You I never even talked to her about birth certificates. I did. This here, we had sent uh, DNA standards in. And according to the lab, there's a 99.84% that you're the father. We were able to send, there were fetal bones when she was found. The baby was there? Mm -hmm. Those oh, were preserved. Man, that's so disgusting. That. Well, it, it Jesus is. Jesus Christ. I didn't think I ever had sex with her. Mm -hmm. And we had anal sex and we had blowjobs and stuff. Yeah. You mean the one time I might have done sex? So now it's one time. That was going to be your, your first child. And I hate to tell you like this. Someone killed my kid. Someone killed Robin and killed my kid. Yes. And, and we need your help today. Lee's lies about his relationship with Robin are catching up with him. He's contradicted his own statements left and right, so now there's only one thing left to do. Well, you have a search warrant you're searching Search with. warrant for what that is. It's a Q-tip, a swab inside your mouth. We'll ship that out, and we'll know in two days. Well, what'd you guys think? I think you played it in as well as you could. He's, you know, you see, and he crosses his arms at some of the stuff. He's laying him back, you know. Oh, his mouth's dry as shit, even after he oh, drank. That was good. Okay, so here's what the good thing was, and I wrote them all down. Every time you called him in a little bitty lie where another witness disputed what he said, because the point of a cold case is to catch him in lies that other people can dispute or refute. It's not to catch him saying, okay, you're right, yeah. I did it. That's not going to happen. And then when you hit him with the fact that he's the baby's daddy, all of a sudden he's crawfishing a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he teared up on that. Yeah. That, that hit him. Yeah. Okay, I want to turn this uh, over to Captain Payton, have Captain Payton rush this down to FedEx. Thank you, buddy. I'll get this mail out. All right, hot off the press. Just got an email. This is on the uh, paternity analysis. All right, hot off the press. Just got an email. This is on the uh, paternity analysis. All right, it says Jack Savage is excluded as a biological father of the fetus of Robin Stone. Zero percent probability. 352,245 to one. 
Lee Savage is not excluded as the biological father of the fetus, Sir Robin Stone. 99.99% probability. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Woo! He's the daddy. All right, so that means after 23 years and everybody wondering if Lee Savage really had the motive, we can say today the odds of him being the daddy are as good as they get because there's no 100%. Can't get any better. So when you consider Lee's history of violence... He broke my tailbone once, pushed me out the back door of my mom's house. He punched you on your arms, your legs, and your chest as well. Right. All the lies and contradictions he made during his interview... You'd said that you uh, dated Robin for about nine months. Really? Robin had wanted to put your name on the birth certificate. Said that. The fact that Robin's body was found in a spot less than a mile from Lee's house, a spot that he is known to frequent and add in the fact that he is the father of Robin's child, something he never wanted to be. You have a case good enough to present to the prosecutor, which is exactly what Detective Mackie and Williams are on their way to do. Are y'all fired up? We're ready. Been good waiting 23 know. years for this. Good we'll be luck. back. Good luck. Thanks. Good Don't luck. forget anything. We won't. We got it. Listen to mom now, okay? <laughs> Hey. Hey. Jason and Sam are back from seeing the prosecutor, and we're all anxious to see how it went. <sighs> Y'all making us suffer. Well, we talked to Dan. Um, he definitely agrees we made a lot of progress this week. On There's a lot of things he likes about the case and where we've come. He was really impressed with all these things that Lee, you know, his story has totally changed over the years. But there are some things he wants us to continue on, and once we get and we tighten up the screws a little bit on there. He's definitely open to uh, uh, presenting this down the road. We always want to hear their prosecutor will present a case to a grand jury right away, but I'm not the one taking this to court. Prosecutor Dan Padden has to present this in court one day, and he has to feel comfortable with what he has. One thing I do know is that Sam and Jason are going to keep working and make this case against Lee Savage even stronger. Well, it was wonderful being here. Thank you all so much. Thank you again. You're very welcome. Thank you all. Thank you. Kelly, Yolanda, Steve, and Johnny, uh, they were awesome to work with. A great experience. Jason. Can't thank them enough for everything that they did. Thank you very much. Hello, guys. How are you? Hi, guys. Been a long week? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's why Sam wanted to call you all today. Okay, there's two things that we did find out through DNA. One is, it was a boy. Oh, he ain't here with us, you know, but at least now I know what he was. Maybe me and Jamie can figure a name out. And the other is that Lee Savage is the father of the baby. We talked to, uh, to the prosecutor today. Uh, there's just a few more things that he wants us to do just to kind of tighten up, and then he is considering taking this case to the, the grand jury here down the road. Oh, that's great. That's, yeah, that's good. Wow. Well, it's because of this man right here. Yes. That case just sat here for 23 years until this man right here picked it up and made all this happen. So he's the one you owe thanks to. But you get to pester him all you want to. <laughs> It was very nice meeting y'all. Yeah, Come here and give me a hug. You take care of your mom, okay? Yeah. It's been a long time, and my sister can finally rest in peace. We'll be talking probably a lot over the next few weeks, keeping you up to date on what's going on. Okay. All right, thank, thank you, you guys. Us. We've made a lot of progress this week, and one of the best things is that we can now answer some of Judy's questions. All of the other little pieces of the story that she's tortured herself with in the past 23 years, uh, maybe we can give her a little bit more of those answers and a little bit of peace. <laughs>